What does it feel like to be a sibling? Annoying. What does it really feel like to be a sibling? Um, annoying. Laugh. What's it feel like to be a sibling? Same as her. Okay, well, I'm a sibling. I loved growing up with big brothers, maybe because I'm the youngest. I, I loved growing up with brothers because they always tucked me in at bedtime. Today, we are going to talk about how you really can create a magical bedtime routine with your children when you have more than one. And especially if they're not twins, then obviously they're different ages. They're going to have different developmental needs during their bedtime routine and it is possible and we can make a cohesive bedtime routine that is good for babies, toddlers, preschoolers, school age kids, and everything in between. We really can make it a very calm and soothing bedtime experience and your kids will be ready to go to bed after your routine is through. Okay, the first thing that you wanna make sure that you do is to have a consistent bedtime. This doesn't even go with the routine, this goes with the actual time of bed. Your child's internal clock, their circadian rhythm, whatever you wanna call it, but their internal body's cue to produce melatonin is going to happen at the same time every day. Now, if your child is older than eight to 12 weeks old, then their circadian rhythm is really starting to develop. Now, of course, if they're much older than that, then their body knows when it is bedtime and when it is awake time. So we need to make sure that you are having a consistent bedtime. Like if somebody keeps count of how many times I say consistent in this video, maybe I'll give you a prize. I am going to tell you about consistency 50,000 times in this video. You really will just come to learn that consistency is like the number one thing that I teach every single family that I work with. Start with consistency and everything else will fall into place. I literally promise, like that is a promise. Tip number two is to have a conducively relaxing bedtime routine. Now, yes, you can do this with more than one child at a time. Clearly, you see that I have more than one child. I actually have three kids. One of them is still at school, but what I loved doing when they were younger was just having them all involved in the same bedtime routine. So when they're younger, yes, you can give them all a bath at the same time. There is no problem with putting a baby boy and a toddler girl in the bathtub at the same time. They are unaware of differences of body parts, so it's totally fine and appropriate. You can give them a bath at the same time. And then from there, you will have all of them in their towels and you will get all of them dressed into their pajamas. One of the things that I love about having older children with a baby or a younger toddler is that the older child, and actually no matter how old the younger child is, but the older child can always read a book to the younger child, especially if you have three kids and maybe the oldest child can get themselves dressed, pick out the bedtime story and start reading it to the younger child while you are getting the younger child or younger children dressed. So simultaneously, this is all happening at once and your child is having reading time, they're practicing reading, and even if they're in preschool and they're not reading yet, they can read. They can picture read, take a picture walk. That's something that you may hear a lot of kids say if they're in preschool or something like that. They may be talking about going on picture walks in stories where they tell a story based on the pictures, AKA a picture book. I mean, isn't that just what we called it when we were little? Even if your kid can't read, they can still tell a story. Once you have the older child reading a story to the baby, then you can read a story to both or all of them together, and then you can do the separation where the older child goes and sits on their bed with one more book. During that time, you will be getting the baby into the sleep sack, turning on the white noise, and having about five minutes of cuddle time before you put the younger baby into bed. Another thing that you can do with the preschooler is use my bed time routine cards so that they can independently do some of like the hygienic things on their own. Now if you're not doing a bath every night and I will like side note always recommend to brush your kids teeth while they're in the bathtub or have them brush while they're in the bathtub and then you brush after them but if you are not doing a bath night then you can have your child go brush their teeth and wash their hands before they get into their bed to read their book while you're doing the other things with the baby. This should go without saying, but make sure that if you are going to give your toddler or preschooler a little bit more of that independence and freedom, that you do have things baby proofed. So make sure that if you're doing all of these things in an upstairs, upper level of your house, that you do have a baby gate on the stairs and that your child is not trying to go down the stairs. It's going to take some practice to 
teach them and train them how to do these parts of the routine independently, but I'm telling you it is a game changer. When you're using my bedtime routine cards, your child can independently look at and point to what comes next and what they should be doing and what's expected of them during this bedtime routine. If you click the link in the description box down below, you can get a link to the template that you can customize the bedtime routine cards and print them out and hang them at your child's eye level. So I definitely recommend getting them laminated as well so that as your child is going through and touching them and pointing to them on a daily basis, they are a little bit more sturdy when it comes to the wear and tear of their routine cards. Now, once your baby is in bed and you have their white noise on, their blackout shades, and they're like going to sleep and they're good to go, that is when you are going to go spend a little bit more one-on-one -on -one time with your older child because chances are it's going to line up completely perfectly where maybe the baby goes to bed at 7 p.m. and your toddler or preschooler doesn't need to go to bed until 7, 7.30, in which case you can have some more one-on-one -on -one time together. Something that I love recommending to toddler and preschool families is to do some bedtime yoga. So there are three bedtime yoga stories and they're like flashcards that I love recommending to these preschool toddler families. There's Good Night Yoga, Good Night Animal World, and there's Breathe Like a Bear. Those are three really good recommendations that I love giving families for bedtime with the older kiddos so that they can have a little bit of activity, but it's yoga, so it's still calming and reflective if you're pairing it with a meditation, which also brings me to the next point that with toddlers and preschoolers, you can do guided meditations. And something that I love is the Zenimal. I love the Zenimal because you can pop in different mini SD cards that are loaded with stories and meditations that can guide your child into a calm state and ready to sleep. So this is all stuff that you can do just one-on-one -on -one with your older child while your other younger child is already in their bed falling asleep. Now you know that the younger child is in their bed falling asleep, so you don't have to worry about their safety and security because you already took care of all of that. And you can really focus this time on just one-on-one -on -one time right before bed. And there are three times a day that are the most important times of day for your bonding with your child. One is going to be the first like three to five minutes upon waking up in the morning. The second one is gonna be those three to five minutes right after school, preschool, whatever it might be, even if it's just play group, but to just have that connection time after having a lot of overstimulation or just stimulation in general. And then the third one is that like five to 10 minutes right before bed. So really having that connection time with your child is Perfect. The next thing that I wanted to talk about is that conversation and talking time with your older child. And the, like this doesn't even have to do with the bedtime routine, but it's just like a tip that I have come across as a parent of three children. One of the best times, there's two really amazing times to have conversations with your kids when they might be about bigger things in the world. And one of them is when you're driving in the car and you're not face to face. So if they are really overwhelmed about something, they have, they're more apt to actually have a conversation with you when it's not like intensely face to face. And then the other time is when you're laying in bed with them. So I 110% of the time will get into my kids' beds. I still do with my six, eight and 10 year olds. I will get in bed with them every single night talk to them about their day, talk to them about whatever they want to talk about, but also how was your day? And just really like talking about the day and with younger kids like toddlers, you're obviously going to have to guide this conversation more, but what your job is, is to really recap what happened in their day because then you're also helping their brain process the memories of what happened that day and just kind of rehashing and reliving a couple of moments that were really great that day. It's a really good time to do that. And then you can also kind of like give or take here if you want to do this or not, but to tell them a couple things that you might look forward to doing tomorrow because some kids get a little bit of FOMO about like maybe that they're missing something once they go to bed, especially once they're that toddler preschool age and they're getting a little more curious about the world around them. You can tell them, well, these are all the things that we did today and here's something really exciting we're gonna do tomorrow. Just don't make it too exciting because then they're gonna stay up all night and be like, is it time yet? 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 It time yet? So definitely have that little recap time with your child at the end of the day. 
So it kind of goes without saying here that it is really important that if you are going to have to put two kids to bed around the same time, and I'm talking about within 30 minutes of each other, that you really make that bedtime routine possible for you to maintain your sanity while you need to put them to bed. Now, it is not your job to make your baby fall asleep. If your baby will not fall asleep without you holding them, then you're going to have to look at some sleep training strategies. You can look at my sleep training packages for my one-on-one -on -one consultation in the description box down below. I would love to help your family really get a handle on this bedtime routine, especially when you have more than one kid, and really honing in on how to do this properly when you have more than one child and you need to be able to like not be in two places at once because you can't be in two places at once. So just to kind of give a little backstory here, I am working with a family who has two children and they are about two-ish years apart and the mom always has to put the girl, the baby girl down to bed. The dad always has to put the toddler boy down to bed. The problem is that dad is starting a new job and he's not going to be home at bedtime. He's having some funky work hours and he's not gonna be home for bedtime all the time. So mom has to figure out how to put both kids down at about the same time. They're going to stagger the bedtimes. So one's going down at seven, one's going down at 7.30 and they're going to do everything that we just talked about as well as implementing sleep training methods that will help their children learn how to fall asleep independently. So if you are in that boat, then definitely reach out for a one-on-one -on -one consultation and we will get your family sleeping. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Don't forget that if you have a preschooler or toddler, then you can start using bedtime routine cards. Link is in the description box down below. And bonus, they also come with morning routine cards. So that morning chaos hour of of trying to get everybody ready and out the door on time is gonzo that is out the door the chaos can go out the door you guys can go out the door in a sane way by using the morning routine cards that come complimentary with your bedtime routine cards so i hope you enjoyed this video and keep blooming Mwah.